when you're being taught that way, it can only happen from within. And a group of Americans decided they would try to do that, not because there was some real genuine threat. Good, okay, let's call to order the 879th meeting of the Board of Directors of Alexandria Sanitation Authority, now known as Alexandria Renew. Uh, board members, if you could take a look at the agenda and could I have a motion to approve the agenda? So move. So move. Moved and seconded by Mr. Beal. At this point, let's introduce Mr. Bruno from McGuire Woods, who is uh, sitting in for Jonathan Rock today. Uh, Mr. Bruno, could you walk us through the procedures for an electronic meeting? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, good evening, everyone. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic emergency, the January 19th, 2021 Board of Directors meeting of Alexandria Renew Enterprises is being held electronically pursuant to Virginia Code Section 2.2 dash 3708.2A3, the continuity of governance ordinance adopted by the city council on June 20th, 2020, and or section 4.0-00G in HB 29 and HB 30 to undertake essential business. All the members of the board and staff are participating from remote locations through a video conference call on Zoom. Public notice of the meeting includes the link for web access and phone numbers for dial-in access. In accordance with the applicable law, this meeting is being recorded and the recording will be posted on the Alexandria Renew website following the meeting. Please let me know if you have any questions about the procedures for this meeting. Thank you, Mr. Bruno. Uh, Lorna, do we have any members of the public who wish to speak? Uh, no, we don't. Thank you, thank you. Board members, if you take a look at the um, consent calendar, uh, all we have in the consent calendar today uh, is the minutes from our meeting on December 15th. I'll give you a minute to take a look at those and then let's have a discussion and a motion to approve if there are no revisions. Mr. Johnson. So everyone yeah. had a chance to review the minutes. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? So move. Second. Thank you. Uh, let's do a roll call vote on the consent calendar. Mr. Beal. Aye. Uh, Ms. Calderelli. I'll get that right out. Ms. Calderelli, how do you vote on the minutes? Um, Aye. Aye. Okay. Mr. Dickinson. Aye. Mr. Johnson. We're having some difficulties with Mr. Johnson's. Um, I'm working with him now, so we're going to get him on as soon as possible. Okay. Uh, Mr. Hill, aye. So the consent calendar passes. Let's wait uh, okay. for Mr. Okay. Johnson to get online because I know he has deep interest in the, the, uh, the bond issues. Okay. Yes, I'm here. Okay. Okay, all right, well, let me go ahead and send you another one, okay? Sure. Bye.
I just resent Mr. Johnson the link, so we're trying to get him um, back on again. Okay, we have a short agenda today, so I think we can afford to wait a, a little okay. bit longer. Uh, I, I do want Bruce to join in on this discussion. It's, it's a very important one for the Budget and Fiscal Affairs Committee. Let, let's wait about two more minutes and then we'll get started and, and we can update, update Mr. Johnson when he arrives. So let's wait two more minutes. At, uh, at this point, let's uh, maybe jump ahead in the agenda and uh, talk about the uh, board of directors reports and then the, uh, the, the, monthly, uh, the monthly outcomes update. And then we'll, we'll, we'll come back to the bond issue uh, when Mr. Johnson joins us. So uh, let's start with uh, board of director reports. Uh, last week, uh, we had a meeting of the uh, the, the board city council work group, Mr. Beal joined me for that with uh, the mayor and councilwoman uh, Jackson. Uh, the, the presentation from that meeting was attached, I, I believe, to the invite to this meeting. Um, let me summarize the meeting, uh, although I do encourage you to look at the handouts. It was uh, two really important pieces of business went over, we went over in the meeting. One was introductions. Uh, the CEO uh, introduced uh, the, the Trailer Shea team to uh, the mayor and Councilwoman Jackson. And I have to say, uh, Trailer Shea, as they did with us, uh, really impressed uh, the mayor and uh, Ms. Jackson with their, their experience and expertise. They, uh, they did what they did with us. They walked us through their, their long list of similar projects of equal or greater magnitude. And I think did a great mayor and, uh, and councilwoman uh, about their capabilities. So I think a very successful uh, introduction of Trailer Shea. And the other introductions was the stakeholder advisory group, which is going to come back into session in February. 
I encourage you to look at the, the handout from the meeting because it has all of the stakeholder advisory group members in it. You probably will recognize some of them from the previous SAG group, uh, but although there's some new members as well. Uh, I believe the first meeting of the stakeholder group is in February and encourage all of you, uh, if, you if you can, to attend. So introductions, trailer Shea, SAG, uh, that was good. The other outcome of the meeting uh, that impressed me was the progress made to date on the River Renew project. Uh, the physical manifestation of the project is now becoming obvious to, to many. Uh, I think you all have seen uh, Robins Internal North and the, the site preparation for that at RTN, as well as the site preparation on our uh, plant uh, on Limerick Street or near Limerick Street. And I think that that was very impressive to the mayor and councilwoman, just the, the amount of prep work that is already underway and already completed for the tunnel project. So that's sort of my takeaway from the meeting, but I encourage you to look at the, the handout. Uh, Mr. Beal, any, any observations from the meeting? I don't have anything to add. I think the, the mayor and uh, the councilwoman were both very impressed and uh, Prelo Shea did a good job. Yeah. It's, uh, I tell you, after those meetings, I always just go to envious of the engineers when you, you talk to some of these folks who have been working on projects for 20 and 30 years and they can point to five or six uh, sort of monumental projects that they've already worked on and they're still still young folks. So very, very impressive group. Uh, Bill, uh, Mr. Dickinson, do you have a question? No, I, I was there. I listened to you both uh, and I too was impressed with the presentation and excited about the new stakeholder group. Uh, yeah, we have about three or four holdovers, yeah. uh, veterans. And I've talked to two of them since, and they're really excited being back on board. So that was a good sign. That was a good group, and maybe we'll get to meet in person, which would be <laughs> wonderful. That'd be nice. Good, good. Okay, uh, let's let's move right to the, the CEO's uh, monthly outcome report. Uh, Madam CEO, could you walk us through the monthly report? Um, yes, we received the monthly report. Uh, if you have any questions on what was submitted, let me know. It, it also included the financial report. And um, the one thing I did want to point out was there is an update to the way that we're doing the dashboard for River Renew. Now that we've moved beyond this, mostly uh, the projects at the plant, we, uh, we've revamped it to really focus on the tunnel program itself and the work of the uh, design builder. So you can see that we've got the design build schedule laid out. Um, we've tried to give you a three month look ahead so you can stay up to date and what we're planning to do, what the design build team is planning to do. A lot of this has to do with some community outreach that we're looking at. If we run into any delays, we'll uh, let you know those as well. So the next couple of pages uh, look to the actual status of each of the separate parts and pieces of the overall contract. There are many pieces to this contract uh, to make it work um, as I turn the page. Uh, then we get to pages five and six, which look at your costs and the community outreach piece. So if there's something missing that you would like to see, let us know so we can uh, improve this and make it useful to you uh, as we go forward. So we're always, always looking for feedback and hopefully uh, this serves to keep you up to date and informed on the program uh, overall. And um, one other thing I would like to echo Mr. Dickinson's comments about the city and the city's work with the with the vaccine. Uh, uh, the deputy city manager actually reached out to Alex Renew to help with the volunteers. And as Mr. Dickinson noticed, it, it is a process. There's 40 to 50 volunteers to make that happen, to keep it safe, to keep people coming in and out. And they're all um, within departments of the city and they listed Alex Renew as a department of the city. So I had the opportunity to volunteer several of the staff and oh, great, great. Um, volunteered as well. Uh, kudos to the city, to, the, um, to their emergency team and their health department. It was a very well run, very safe, um, very efficient operation. 
I don't think people realize what it takes to make these shots happen. It's oh. not, you know, the little technician walking in with her igloo cooler, um, you know, giving you doses of shots. It's they everybody has to stay safe. You, you still have a pandemic going on. So I really wanted to thank the city for allowing Alice Renew to serve along with them and, and help the community um, during this time. It was it was just really all inspiring. I got to meet some great people. Um, the the deputy sheriffs were there and the police and the fire. It was just it was pleasant to see really happy people. I yeah. was a group <laughs> leaving, so it was just nice to you know see people, um, but see happy people as well. So uh, I really do echo that the city has got their act together, um, yeah. regardless of what anybody says, and um, I'm really proud to be part of it. As, as is all of Alex Renew. That's 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 wonderful, uh, Mr. Dickinson. I have a quick question. Uh, I noticed in your CEO report that there were several of our employees who contracted COVID. Um, what's their status right now? Are they still in quarantine? Um, have they been hospitalized? Uh, so we had, it's a good question. We had two um, and we've had several close calls. They are out of quarantine, they're back at work. No one, um, we did have one employee who was hospitalized back in November. Um, he has since retired. It was right before his retirement date. Um, all the rest, I'm very happy to say, um, you know, flu like symptoms, if anything, uh, and have been uh, returned to work. So um, that is good news if there is any out of the whole pandemic. Was the COVID picked up by testing that we supported or elsewhere? And are we having all our employees tested? No, we do not have them tested. There's a protocol that's followed through the CDC guidelines. If someone does not feel well, then they go and um, get the test. Uh, they cannot come back to work until they get a negative test or um, have a doctor's note to come back. So we have a, a whole pro uh, process and protocol that's followed. And that's covered with uh, medical leave? Yes. Okay. Once they're sick, uh, under the, the rules of the the state. Madam CEO, I noticed in the monthly report the number of delinquencies has leveled off. Um, any any insights or observations about the delinquencies? Um, I think it's just it comes and goes depending on who who pays off a bill and who gets added to the list of bills. Um, as you do recall, we did get some CARES Act funding. Um, and I just briefly, I did want to mention that and I forgot. Um, we did learn, if you recall, we got about $430,000 in funds to help um, with those folks who are delinquent under the governor's budget rules. Um, we did learn late last week that the deadline was extended. So the original deadline was the end of January. It's now been extended through the end of this year. Um, again, that means the program is a little bit in flux. We're trying to figure out exactly what this means and who is eligible and not. But at this time, we have processed about 149 applications, uh, which is about, would use up about 20% of the grant funds that we've received to date. So uh, as we know more, we will let you know, we are having internal discussions around how we can uh, change our outreach to make sure we get all these funds where they need to go to those that, that really need the help. Uh, again, we're waiting for more guidance from the state as to what all this means. So um, we continue to adapt to make that, that happen. Did I hear you correctly that, that Alex and his staff actually processes these the applications for relief? Yes, yes, they come into us and we go through them and, um, and work through that. So yes, one of the many, many things we do. That's, uh, that's, that's, that's a wonderful service in light of where we are as a country right now. Uh, thank, thank you, thank you for the update. That, yes, and, and it, it's good that we were able to get those funds from the state. I'm glad at, you know, at the last minute the, the governor did put that that money in the budget for water and waste for all utilities so that we could give some relief to those who really need it during these times. Wow, thank, thank you for the update. Any other questions on the monthly report? The board. 
If there are no questions, and we still don't have Mr. Johnson, uh, Lorna is uh, Bruce going to join anytime soon? Or actually, Mr. Johnson is on. He's joining by phone. Um, he just needs to um, unmute himself, and he should be um, able to join the call. Mr. Johnson, can you hear us? Well, let's get, uh, let's continue on with the agenda, move back to, to item six, new business. And Madam CEO, if you could uh, begin the discussion on the uh, proposed resolutions for authorizing uh, sewer revenue bonds that both the WIFIA, the uh, revolving fund and the BRA bond issues, could you uh, introduce that topic? Certainly, it's actually my pleasure tonight to uh, bring to you these three debt-related resolutions for your approval. Um, one, of the revolution, one of the resolutions, the last one, is uh, will you to approve that it really takes advantage of the current market conditions that we're finding ourselves in, and this is going to allow Alex Renew to better manage our existing debt. The remaining two resolutions directly relate to the needs of our newest mission, which is the ownership and the execution of the River Renew program. The finance team has been working to secure the favorable debt instruments for more than a year, and several of them who've played an instrumental role are on, on the, at the meeting tonight. Um, we met Mr. Bruno, uh, you know Ms. Fry, and of course, uh, Ms. McIntyre has been leading this effort with uh, our rate consultants as well. And tonight, we're sharing with you the results of those very successful negotiations. Um, staff has worked diligently to balance all of our financial tools to allow for the maximum amount of flexibility to Alex Renew in our ever-changing climate. Our ability to adaptively manage cash and cash flows is critical given the large size and fast pace of the River Renew program. We are very grateful to the city staff and the legislative delegation for their help in securing cost sharing with of this very large infrastructure program with the Commonwealth through the grant funding. And we continue to look forward to their continued support in securing additional grant funding as we move forward with the governor's budget. This has been an incredibly rapid project award. As we noted in several past meetings, the cost has continued to fluctuate culminating in the award of the River Renew construction contract with Trailer Shea in December of last year. This has effectively locked in our cost projections and it's helped us to set debt ceilings, uh, but these have not created a material change in the debt structure or the percent splits among the various sources of funding. Ms. McIntyre, our CFO has worked with our incredibly talented staff and our key consultants, uh, Ms. Fry and Mr. Bruno with McGuire Woods to help get us to this point this evening and to share some very good news overall. She's now going to provide you a brief presentation to help inform the basic data that staff has already provided to you in the board memos and the board package. So Ms. McIntyre. Thanks, Karen. Lorna, if you could let me share. I think you may need to unshare first. Bear with me one minute, folks. Great, can you all see the slides? Yes. Yes, great. So as Karen mentioned, I'm gonna talk briefly about our capital funding plan for River Renew, give you some context around these resolutions for which we're seeking approval. And we're gonna start by taking just a minute to um, 
recap what is River Renew and what how does it relate to uh, capital funding? So River Renew is one of the largest infrastructure programs in the city's history. As you all know, um, as it stands today, there's four combined sewer outfalls in the city that pollute our waterways on rainy days. And in 2017, the Commonwealth passed a state law requiring the city to fix this issue by 2025, and the River Renew program endeavors to do just that. Um, there are several different projects in the program. Some of them have already been underway for a few years to prepare the plant for the largest project, the tunnel system project. And the map shown on the right side of the slide depicts the various facilities and infrastructure being built, including the tunnel in order to capture those flows from the outfalls, bring them to the plant so that we can treat them before they're discharged to the water bodies. As, as Karen alluded to, doing this amount of work under this timeline comes with a substantial financial obligation. And while the River Renew team has been preparing for construction, those of us on the finance side have been figuring out how to pay for it. And in the utility business, um, capital financing, which is really just a fancy name for debt, is very often used on large projects like this. It makes good sense to do so because the assets that we're building are gonna be serving the community for 50 plus years. So it just makes sense to spread that cost out over a longer time frame. Um, in the case of the River Renew program, um, staff has recommended that the two largest projects, the tunnel system project, and what we call the Building J Project, which was the um, demolition of the former administrative building to make way for the tunnel shaft, that those two projects use debt financing and approval of those transactions is what we're here to talk about today. Um, we last spoke to the board formally about this topic in February of 2020. Um, at that time, we were looking at a total program cost of around 464 million as you all know, that number is higher today and we'll, we'll show that on the next slide. But um, when we last talked, we had planned to pay for about $69 million of the program with what we call PAYGO or cash. We were projecting about $41 million of contributions from Fairfax County. And the rest we intended um, to finance from either grant proceeds or debt financing. At that time, we had not received any state grants. We have since received the first $25 million installment that was received last fiscal year and put towards previous expenditures on River Renew. And at that time, of course, the tunnel system design build contract had not yet been awarded. So as you know, today we have awarded the contract, which provides us with additional cost certainty around the program. And the River Renew team issued the notice to proceed to Trailer Shea in December. Last month, we processed our very first monthly payment to Trailer Shea. Um, and I found this data point just interesting and helpful to think through the magnitude of what we're doing here. But that very first payment was for $12 million. That's more than our indenture requires us to keep in our cash reserve. <laughs> That, that's around nine and a half million dollars. So that's 150 days of cash out the door in a single payment. So the spending curve, as they call it, is about to increase exponentially. Of course, we knew that was coming and that's why we're eager to get um, these debt facilities in place so that we have the cash flow available and also because we're fortunate to find ourselves in a great market environment to issue this debt. So we've had some great outcomes along the way and I'm excited to share with you our plan. This is where it stands uh, today. Um, the pie chart over to the right walks you through the different funding sources. Um, we're now looking at a total cost estimate of $615 million on the program. And the funding sources that we're um, projecting to, to pay for the program are pretty much the same, although the numbers have moved around for different reasons. Um, in terms of PAYGO or cash, um, we're currently projecting to actually only fund 6% um, with cash. And um, the, the reason for that is largely attributable to um, my own knowledge and experience growing at Alex Renew, having gone through that single audit process last year. So what I learned is that as soon as you pay for a project or a contract with debt proceeds, 
you then have to do all of the compliance requirements on that project or that contract. So when we previously presented the percentage of cash that we wanted to contribute, we assumed it would be 15% because our financial policy requires us to fund 15% of the CIP with cash. But what I learned over the last year was it makes more sense to put less cash into the projects that have are already going to be facing these requirements. That way you can fully cash fund some of the smaller projects and avoid subjecting them to these requirements. So not that there's anything wrong with those projects. It's just a very heavy lift to do all of this ongoing reporting with the contracts and projects. So just trying to find the most efficient um, arrangement there. In terms of the Fairfax contributions, as you all know, there was a cost share agreement executed on that in 2020. Um, so we've reflected um, a new number there. And the cost share does its best to estimate the, the Fairfax County contributions, but we actually bill them every month as we actually um, do the work. So that number may not shake out to the penny, but that's what we're projecting at this time. In terms of the grant funding, because we've already received the first 25 million, we did count that in our plan here. Um, we're not yet counting the additional 25 million. We just don't wanna rely on it until we know it's in the bank. Um, fortunately, both of the debt programs we use, and this is a really critical point today, these programs are drawdown programs. So when it says we're gonna issue $185 million of debt through clean water, that means up to that amount. Same thing with WIFIA, we're allowed to draw up to 320 million. We are not obligated to draw that full amount. So if the grant money comes in this year, which it may, we'll simply draw less on, on one of the bond issues. And just a little bit about the two lending programs. We talked about a lot of this last year, but um, the WIFIA program, I know many of you will ask me again what it stands for, and it's a mouthful, but it's the Water Infrastructure Finance and Innovation Act. It's a federal program. It is new to Alex Renew, and it's actually new in general, just a couple years old, um, but that's a federal program. It is, um, offers a great subsidized interest rate, a lot of flexibilities, and they, they are gonna give us um, enough funding for up to 49% of the tunnel system project. And if you wonder why 49%, that's just what they do. Um, the program was designed to work in conjunction with state funds. So they'll basically fund half and then they want you to go find the other half somewhere else, which is exactly what we've done. And then, um, the piece we expect to close through the Clean Water Revolving Loan Fund. Um, as you all know, we have most of our existing debt through that program. They've been a wonderful partner to us over the years. Um, so we intend to finance the balance through them. And as I've alluded to, the, the plan we're proposing has a lot of benefits and offers a lot of flexibility to Alex Renew, which is really important as we move through the program. Again, we can draw the funds as we need. That allows the debt to sort of increase gradually, which allows the rate increases to support the debt to also increase gradually, which has been our marching orders from you all. Again, very low subsidized interest rates. Um, the WIFIA program in particular offers the opportunity to um, repay the debt over a bit of a longer time frame. So they'll allow you to go up to 35 years after project completion. That is what we have contemplated in our current plan, but the debt could always be paid off quicker if, if the organization wanted to do it that way. We're just trying to give ourselves maximum flexibility. We're also fortunate to find ourselves in a great interest rate environment to lock in these loans. Um, one of the silver linings of the pandemic has been that interest rates have decreased significantly. We've just seen an economic downturn. Um, we've been keeping a close eye on this and you can see to the right, that's basically a five year history of the indicative rates for these two programs. And you can see that where we are today is, is quite a bit lower than the average. Um, I know some of you are probably very curious about the 
exact interest rates that we'll get, as am I. And um, one important thing to note is that in both cases, the interest rate is locked at closing. So this is what they call fixed rate debt. It, it is there till 2060 at that rate. Um, so the rate is very important. And um, in the case of the WIFIA program, they peg the rate to the 30-year treasury rate. So you know anyone can go and look that up. It's in the 1.80, 1.85 range right now. And whatever that rate is, plus 0.01% will be our rate um, for the life of the loan. And so we were initially uh, scheduled to close on Friday. We might still, but we're encountering some issues with the presidential transition and who on the EPA side is actually going to sign the document. So we may get bumped into next week. But whatever that rate is on the day we close, we lock it for the life, which is excellent. That's incredible. Yep. In the case of the Clean Water Revolving Loan Fund, same thing, they lock it closing, but they base the rate on the prior four weeks and they have their own formula. Um, but we were able to find out today that if we stick with our closing date, which is currently scheduled for February 4th, we know what our rate will be. And that's 1.35% on $185 million of capital. So that's just extraordinary. Um, really, really excited to be able to lock and, and kind of have that piece of our puzzle finalized. This slide depicts the annual debt service payments. I know you've seen this many times. The light blue represents our existing debt. The dark blue represents the clean water revolving loan fund debt that we're proposing. And the green is the WIFIA debt that we're proposing. And you can see how the payments gradually step up as we approach project completion in 2025. And again, we've structured that that way on purpose so that the rate increases needed can be nice and steady and gradual and not um, extreme in any one year. Um, what they call wrapped WIFIA around, again, taking advantage of that long final maturity that kind of smooths out the payments. And we talked about that back in February. Um, and then I just wanted you guys to be aware um, that when the WIFI loan closes, there'll be kind of some publicity around that. And they always advertise the interest cost savings that are attributable to using the program. So they have a little formula they use that says, okay, here's what you're gonna pay under WIFIA. Here's what you would have paid if you had gone to the public markets to do a bond issue. And the last time we ran that calculation, we were getting $92 million in savings wow. from the program, which is just extraordinary. And before you ask, when we go into rates next year, we'll be sure to quantify what that means in terms of the monthly bill, but it is definitely significant. Um, and I'm just thrilled that we've been able to take advantage of these programs. Now for the, the big reveal, um, we had to get a public credit rating as part of the WIFIA program. And we were thrilled to discover on Friday that we achieved the highest rating you can possibly get, a triple A rating. Um, that came from the rating agency S&P. Um, they're a, a nationally recognized agency that rates um, local governments and utilities and all sorts of companies. Um, and we also had to get a confidential rating as part of the WIFIA process through Moody's, which is another rating agency. And that one was similarly strong, but some of the strengths that they highlighted, um, liquidity, you know, cash is king, as they say, strong management, strong economic fundamentals. They referenced the regionally important service area. So I think they really understood what Alexandria is about. And that came through in our presentations. Um, certainly our nice, long, stable operating history and ability to stay within the confines of our financial policies showed very well. Um, so we're really just thrilled. Um, to be perfectly upfront, we were surprised by the AAA. We thought we were gonna be just one notch below. Um, but in the end, they uh, said that uh, the project team really came across well. We obviously we're doing our homework and planning for this increase in capital spending. And they were also feeling um, good about just economic recovery and COVID and whatnot. So they bumped us up in the final, final grade. So we're just thrilled about that. And 
it, you know, from the board's perspective, it really, I think, adds an element of oversight and credibility and transparency to us as an organization and just really enhances that public engagement and trust that we're always trying to build and maintain. Um, just another side note, the, the rating was required under the WIFIA program but it also benefits clean water for us to have it. Um, we're now one of the largest borrowers in their pool. And when we didn't have a rating before, um, they basically had to count us in the bad bucket when we really were quite credit worthy. So now that we have the AAA rating, they can count us um, as a stronger credit in their pool. And when they go to the markets, they get better interest rates, which provides, you know, a very, very efficient capital funding, not just to us, but to utilities all over Virginia. So I'm just really excited about this outcome. Um, lots of kudos to Karen, to Sarah, our financial advisor at PFM, and to um, the River Renew team that just showed so incredibly well throughout the project process. So. We're thrilled about that, but now we have to keep it up. We'll be talking to the rating agencies every year going forward. And they'll, uh, I think at some point this week, be a public report that goes out um, that you know everyone can, can read and share as they see fit. So really excited about that. And WIFIA was very excited to hear about that today as well. Hey, Christine, I have a question for Mr. Johnson. Sure. I'm going to be uh, translating for him today, I guess. Um, he wanted to know about the letter of credit debt that we have. Are we refinancing? So Bruce, um, we put $30 million line of credit in place for interim financing. Um, we did draw on it um, as part of making this recent tunnel payment. So it is now fully drawn um, for $30 million worth of expenses on either building or the tunnel. Um, we will likely pay it off with the debt proceeds. Um, so assuming we move forward with our closing dates, we'll just pay it off. And then I have, Sarah and I are still working through whether we keep it alive. In its current expiration is June 30th of 2021. So we're still working through whether we want to keep it outstanding. Um, we may just to have, have flexibility or may, maybe at a lower amount. But for the most part, now that we have the long-term proceeds almost in the bank, we should, we may be able to get by without it. Uh, moving on from the rating, um, wanted, oh, Mr. Beal, I see you've raised your hand. Yes, if, if you could back up to the repayment slide, I just had one question. Sure. That it, it looks like we're not repaying with you until 2025, is that right? Yeah, we're, we've structured it so that we start repayment on the clean water debt first, because WIFIA basically, they're much more flexible about the, the repayment schedule. Okay. That's part of how we helped it build up slowly was by deferring repayment on that piece. They're willing okay, to fine. do that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to share... Um, some very preliminary financial projections. This looks out over the next 10 or so years. And I need to caveat this um, by saying that this is not an official rate recommendation or any official, uh, official projections that you all have approved. But this is basically what we showed the rating agencies and WIFIA as we work through this process. Um, you can see that we've got annual rate increases baked in. In this particular model, they're in the six to eight percent range. But again, we'll be coming to you in the coming months with a much more specific and let you understand all of the assumptions behind it um, recommendation on rates. But basically, six to eight percent a year through the project completion. Um, the debt service, as we've mentioned, is gradually stepping up. And basically, what this shows is for the two major guardrails that govern our financial activities service coverage in our cash, this basically proves out that we can afford this debt without deteriorating our financial margins. So this is the kind of um, glimpse that the lending agencies want to see in order to lend us money and feel good that we're going to pay it back. Um, so just wanted to share those. Um, but again, we'll be, re we'll re be refining those through our rate setting process as we go forward in time. Wanted to briefly touch on the loan terms. Um, 
you know, again, clean water, we, we know them, we already have documents with them. And the WIFI negotiation was quite a bit more challenging. I have to give some credit to um, Ms. Sarah Fry and PFM. I mean, Sarah is our financial advisor, even under normal circumstances, but we engaged her and PFM specifically to help us work through the WIFIA and the ratings process since those elements were new for us. And I'm really, really glad we did. Um, PFM is a national firm and they work with a lot of clients who get WIFIA loans and TIFIA loans in different states. And so while we were doing these negotiations, we were armed with a lot of knowledge um, of basically what WIFIA had accepted in other cases. So, you know, if they pushed back, we were able to say, well, you did it for these guys, do it for us. And ultimately we got WIFIA comfortable with essentially the same credit package as we've always offered to clean water. So the plan is to secure WIFIA at the senior lien, which means that they and clean water are you know, on par, on parity. Um, the rate covenant is 1.1 times, which I think may be the lowest they've ever accepted. That's what's in our indenture now. Now, of course, we have that higher financial policy requirement of 1.5, but the, the, the legal document's gonna say 1.1. Um, so we were really pleased with the outcome of, of the negotiations. Um, and just for the board's awareness, both programs, but WIFIA in particular, require all sorts of ongoing audit, compliance reporting, project reporting. So we'll be really uh, increasing our efforts there, um, doing the single audit on WIFIA, as well as our clean water bonds and quarterly project reporting, um, just keeping WIFIA in the loop as, as things may evolve. Um, so there's a very high level of oversight there, which you know, I think should reassure the board that there's a lot of different sets of very credible eyes watching, not just what we're doing with River Renew, but specifically the, the financial parameters and efforts around it. And again, um, this is the, not a formal rates discussion, but we wanted to give you just a preliminary a uh, snapshot of how we think um, this capital funding plan is going to impact the rates that we charge our customers. So, you know, we are facing a higher project cost than we thought initially, but the interest rate environment and the debt structure have provided us a lot of flexibility with rates. Um, I think you all remember at the outset of the program, um, that 20 to $40 range where we said rates, rates would increase for your average residential customer by about 20 to $40. Um, that's what we said at program inception. I think last time we had a formal rates discussion in February, 2019, that range was closer to 27 to 39. So we were thinking we were gonna be within that range, but on the higher end. And our updated projections taking into account this debt structure and current interest rates look like more 20 to $28 increase all in. So again, we'll, we'll be working through this in the rates process, but it appears that, that locking in these low interest rates and structuring the debt as we have is going to have a, a very positive impact and help us minimize the rate increases associated with the program. Christine, before we move off this chart, by, by the way, a fantastic presentation overall, just fantastic. You're, you're, answering, you. you're answering every question that, that comes up before we even have a chance to ask them. So great, great presentation. Um, this chart here, the projected rate increases. Uh, we, we now have a contract, right? So we know the, the price. Um, we are close to closing, so we know interest, right? Um, that uh, 20 to 28% cost projection. What do you think is the certainty around that? What's the, what's the confidence interval around that? How confident are you in that, that number? Is that, is that like a 75% confidence or 80% or 50% confidence? I mean, I would give it 80% barring any you know, additional major capital needs that, that yeah. come down the pike. I mean, if the CIP stays essentially intact in the next couple of years, you know, we've got the cost locked down, we'll get the rates locked down. We should at the very least be able to narrow the range of projected increases. Yeah. Thank, thank you. You know, the, the AAA rating is a, is a real 
feather in our cap and a reflection of a very strong finance team. But frankly, the chart you had on page nine, the, the, the projection, uh, that, that's, that's a real confidence builder, at least for the board. When you look at that and, and, and realize that we've, we've mapped this out you know, 10 years into the future and, and quite, a, quite a nice piece of work. Thank you. Thank Thank you. Good, good answer all the way around. Great, thanks. Yeah, we've mapped it out conservatively as well. So I would argue that we'll likely be able to exceed these levels as we go through the years. But um, lastly, I uh, just wanted to talk briefly about the um, interest rate reductions that can and this is outside of River Renew. But again, the market environment is so favorable that we found um, five series of bonds that were identified by PFM and Sarah. Um, they total about $23 million. And on those loans, um, we were able to go to VRA and just negotiate a rate reduction. So the weighted average rate on that debt went from about two and a half percent, and it's going to go down to 1.13 percent. Um, so the, the total savings are about $1.3 million, um, but we take those savings annually in chunks. So for the next approximately four fiscal years, we'll have about $170,000 in savings. Um, in the years thereafter through 2036, about $60,000 to $90,000 in savings. So that just relieves some pressure on the budget. Um, before you ask me, I don't know the exact um, what it means in terms of the monthly bill. I think it's around a quarter, but I've asked Terry to work that into his uh, rates presentation upcoming. But, you know, anything we can do to just reduce those annually recurring expenses like debt service um, just puts less pressure on the budget and less pressure on rates. So we're excited about that and very grateful to VRA for partnering with us on that. Um, and it's just, you know, convenient to get it done while we're getting all of these other deals done. So just to summarize um, what exactly we're asking for, there are three resolutions um, up for approval here. The first relates to the WIFI alone. It's a not to exceed amount of $321 million. The second relates to the Clean Water Revolving Loan Fund bond. That's for $185 million. And then there's a resolution specifically authorizing the rate reduction on the five series of bonds that I just mentioned. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any more questions for Christine? Mr. Jacobson? I think you're on mute. Uh, Bill, I think you're on mute. Can you hear me now? Yes. We can hear you now. Okay. Um, why is the interest not to exceed 3.75 in there? That's, um, that's a good question, Bill. I'm, I, meant to, I meant to speak to that. Um, when we do these resolutions, we just put big outside parameters um, on it just in case things change drastically. We probably could have lowered that given that we're... <laughs> in just a couple of weeks, but we do not expect the interest rate to actually be that high. Does that mean that the rates could? I mean, I thought we were locking in rates. Well, we're locking them in over the next couple of weeks. So theoretically, they could change. Um, they will not change, I'm confident, by you know, that level of- I hope but not. That's quite a bit. <laughs> um, I had another question in the document. There was a term in there which probably is known to people who are in this business, apparage or something like that? A launch. A long, yeah. What does that mean? Uh, I'm happy to take that one, Christine. Okay. Yes, please. <laughs> I just so, heard. Uh, a launch, a, a launch is, a, is a fancy lawyer word for amendment. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I just learned something, thank you. 
I have the same question, Bill. <laughs> so not only French, not only Latin, but French as well, apparently. Uh, are there any other questions for our CFO? I have a uh, question from uh, Mr. Johnson. Um, he is the, it says, am I right in assuming that the rate increases of $20 to $28 may extend about 40 years from now? Um, I don't think so. The, the 20 to $40 range, we count from pre-River Renew, which I believe was the 2019 rate, through project completion in 2025. So I think the guidance from the board was to do it gradually over that, I think, seven year period. So. So no, we would exp the rate increases would sort of max out at the point the debt maxes out in 2025. Now that doesn't mean there won't be standard inflationary rate increases in those out years, but the ones specifically attributable to River Renew, we intend to complete around 2025, 2026. Great, and just to make sure we clarify, the 20 to 20 dollars is the increase over today's bill. So you're going to see an increase in your monthly bill of anywhere between $20 and $28 through 2025, 2026. And then the, there will still need to be rate increases, obviously out in the future, we don't know what those are based on whatever um, we have to do to maintain the assets that we have in place. Does that answer the question? Um, I have a question. So I understand the need to put um, the interest rate of the 3.75 and the five percent for the clean water revolving loan fund. Um, I understand the that's sort of being conservative, uh, but worst case scenarios, if that has if that does in fact happen, have you run the numbers for that to see how that looks? Um, and just you know, because that's a pretty huge variation over. 40 years or, or whatever. Right. We have, we have a couple, we have a, many different scenarios we've run with the debt. Um, looking forward to being able to cut that down to just one, but um, the two that we primarily tracked during this process were current interest rates plus 0.5% and current interest rates plus 2%. So a pretty conservative outside range there. Christine. And, and, can you remind me again to on the clean water revolving loan fund that one is locked in or will be locked in at 1.25 percent as we, long as we stick to our closing date of february 4th right yes. we just found that out today so um i, I think we have a, a, a some surety around that number as well correct thanks are there any other questions for the cfo Uh, Christine, I, again, I have to repeat what a, what a great presentation. This was just very thoughtful, very well presented, and a tremendous amount of detail went into, into the presentation. So I appreciate Thank that, you. putting that work in for the board. Uh, it's time to entertain a motion to uh, authorize the CEO and, and staff to enter into closing agreements for these three bonds. Is there a motion to authorize the CEO? So moved. Mr. Mr. Chairman, if I could um, ask you to maybe take a, a motion and a second on the, the three resolutions individually. Sure, good. I was, I was gonna ask you, Counselor. I uh, made the wrong guess, okay. Um, let's, let's do this one at a time. Uh, is there a motion to authorize the CEO and staff to enter into an agreement on the WIFIA loan? And uh, so moved. Second. second. Mr. Dickinson, is there a second? Second. Okay, let's do a, a roll call vote. Mr. Beal, how do you vote? Aye. Uh, Ms. Calderelli? Aye. Mr. Dickinson. Aye. Mr. Johnson through through. Mr. Lorna. Johnson votes aye. Mr. Hill, aye. So moved. Now is there a a motion 
to authorize the CEO to enter into closing documents for the revolving fund bond. So move. Mr. Beal, is there a second? Second. Roll call vote. Mr. Beal? Aye. Ms. Calderelli? Aye. Mr. Dickinson? Aye. Mr. Johnson? Mr. Johnson votes aye. Mr. Hill, aye. Now, is there a motion to authorize the CEO to enter into closing agreements for the VRA bond? So moved. Ms. Calderelli, is there a second? No second. Mr. Dickinson, roll call vote. Mr. Beal? Aye. Ms. Calderelli? Aye. Mr. Dickinson? Aye. Mr. Johnson? Mr. Johnson votes aye. Mr. Hill votes aye. So moved. That, I believe, concludes the business of the board for today. Madam CEO, or is there any other business we need to consider? Staff has no other business for you. No other business. From the board, any other, any other business? One question. Uh, would, do these documents need to bear actual signatures? And uh, how can that be arranged? Uh, Mr. Dickinson, they, they do. Okay. And uh, I, I'm going to be working with the folks uh, uh, at the authority to coordinate getting those around to the appropriate parties. Okay. Well, let, just let me know and I'll be glad to drop over and put my John Hancock on it. And I'm sure Mr. Hill will too. No, Think notice the only two signatures you need. And, and from the CEO as well. Okay. Good. Mr. Bruno, just let, let us know what you need and, and we'll be there. Okay, do we have a motion to adjourn? So move. A second? A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks, everybody. Uh, Mr. Bruno, thank you for sitting in as counsel. Appreciate it. And thank everybody, you. please stay safe. We're still uh, battling through the pandemic and, and historic times. So uh, we'll meet again next month at the board meeting in February. Thanks, everybody. Good. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.